Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 22nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. The use of non-ASCII characters in programming languages is becoming more common. For example, Apple's Swift language supports full Unicode, and some vulnerabilities around the use of Unicode in editors have already been reported in recent months. But Didier's diary from today is about a bit a different issue. Didier took a look at Visual Basic for application VBA code using non-ASCII variables. Well, first of all, surprise for an older language like this, it actually works. And now there's still one byte characters. They're not uh, Unicode per se, just the first bit of the byte is set, making them sort of non-standard ASCII characters. By default, uh, DDA's only dumb script is creating somewhat unreadable output in these cases. And this may be one of the goals here, making reverse analysis more difficult. But of course, DDA came up with a decoder plugin and options to help. The decoder plugin will at least find statements that make it easier to find important features like URLs that are being used to download additional malware, which of course we often have in these macros. Plus with the new option added by DDA, the code will also be easier to read. And Cisco yesterday published seven new security bulletins. Uh, Out of these seven, the bulletin disclosing three vulnerabilities in Cisco's Nexus dashboard was uh, the only bulletin rated critical. It is a bulletin that you should pay attention to if you are running uh, this software. One of the vulnerabilities, CVE 2022-2857, does allow an unauthenticated attacker remotely to execute arbitrary commands via the data network. An exposed API here allows arbitrary code execution as root, and that, of course, would lead to a full takeover of the affected system. There are no workarounds, but there is a patch, so apply the patch. There are also uh, two other vulnerabilities in Nexus dashboard that are being addressed here. One is a cross-site request forgery vulnerability that would allow an attack hacker to trick an administrator's browser into sending requests to the admin console. The third vulnerability does allow an unauthenticated attacker to access container images and download images or upload malicious images. Just like for the first vulnerability, this issue is due to insufficient access control of an API function. And that API is accessible via the data and admin network. According to a story by the Registra, Outlook users are receiving messages from Microsoft alerting them to suspect login attempts to their accounts. Now, Microsoft does send messages like this if login attempts originate from odd IP addresses, for example, from a different geographic region that the user normally logs in from. What is odd about this latest rash of messages is that the IP addresses, the login attempts originate from are actually Microsoft-owned IPs. At this point, there's no official statement from Microsoft what may cause this. Very possible that it's the IP address of some proxy or something like this. Of course, Microsoft within its network also hosts well, uh, its cloud systems and such where users may have set up uh, some virtual machines. Could also, of course, be infected systems within Microsoft's network. We really don't know at this point. Well, uh, this is why you're getting these warnings. Uh, You may get a rash of these warnings, but nothing yet uh, from Microsoft. As the registrar here points out, it's actually kind of a good sign that Microsoft does not exempt its own IP addresses from uh, these warnings. And sticking with Microsoft here for uh, two more, a little bit more positive stories. First of all, RDP. RDP, of course, has become sort of the favorite target of a lot of attacks, in particular a lot of uh, 
ransomware sort of enters via RDP servers. Well, in the latest version of Windows 11, I believe that's just the preview version right now, uh, default uh, login limit and lockout was implemented for RDP to help with this. And then secondly, uh, Microsoft is sort of uh, double backing on the macro policy. So beginning of the month, Microsoft announced that they're no longer going to block macros by default in Office documents, which is something they just announced of doing about a month ago. There was a big outcry about this. Well, uh, Microsoft now is reverting their policy again. Macros will be blocked if the mark of the web is set. They did publish additional guidance to administrators about this. And if you adjusted your policy manually, that manual setting will remain. So it will not be overwritten by this change. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And if you like anything, if you dislike anything about this podcast, let me know. Let me know how to improve. Let me know um, what to do more of. And if I forgot any news item that I should have covered, uh, I always like to hear from listeners uh, sort of what topics you're interested in. Uh, So uh, please uh, let me know if I should add another tap to my browser here for all the different news sites and such that I consult for these stories. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.